discovered, we found the, the priest that saved his great aunts. We said, the one is still alive, she's, uh, she's he, still alive. He's still alive? No, he's not alive. He died in a drowning accident in 1951. We want to get the, the Lithuanian government to give him the uh, medal. There's a certain medal, uh, something cross for something, I, I can't remember we the medal. We have different decorations. Different, but they're working on it. I'm, I'm not, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm, I'm telling you in brief, that he's very, very connected to, to Lithuania, and his father heads the second largest yeshiva in the world, which, is the, which has uh, 7,000 students in Lakewood, New Jersey. Rabbi Beitler comes from Vilna, his family from Vilnius, his parents, and he has a very special story. If we start talking about it, then we will never talk about what we have to. His mother is a famous Dina Beitler, that she's a seven-year-old girl that walked out of Pona. She's one of the few people, there's a movie about her, his mother. And he is very emotional about it. He's never seen the, 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 the film about his mother, because he can't, okay, he gets, gets like choked up. But there's a, his mother is a very famous person, because she's one of the people that walked away. There's only five people, apparently, who survived Pona. Buildings. That's his mother. He runs yeshiva in Ashkelon, and uh, you have uh, the, photo the photographer and her husband. The translator is not here yet, and another one or two people. I'm the the, the representative. The, f the first thing, before anything else, is the most important thing. I want, on behalf of all all of us, we represent mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, because just these three yeshivas have 20,000 students and over a quarter of a million um, alumni. So, and in our circles, a person keeps up with his yeshiva. It's not just a college they went to, it's, 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 a, it's a community. So we represent a very large percentage of, uh, of, of the Orthodox Jewish community, and indirectly, all the Orthodox Jewish community, which is between a million and two million people. But especially what we call the Torah world, which is the world of the yeshivas of Lithuania, which, which included then also parts of Poland and, and uh, other areas. The truth is we're all here because of Lithuania. And I don't know if people have understood this correctly, because at the beginning of the war, after the molotov ribbentrop deal, all the yeshivas from White Russia, which was Poland there, escaped to, to Vilnius. But yeah, changing, and I'm very happy that it's changing and they're all being restored. And many nice things are happening. Uh, and um, back to Schnee Cemetery, which as well, um, I would, uh, I, I want to express to you that I perfectly understand the situation uh, because I used to work with this issue many years ago when it just started. I was at that time at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and I was a member of the group of the government which was dealing with this Shnibishkes issue. I met many rabbis at that time, those who were coming to talk, to discuss. So uh, the, the, the introduction of mine is that I perfectly understand how it is important for Jewish people. I perfectly understand how it is important for the Jewish world, not only the Lithuanian Jewish people. Uh, and uh, um, what I want to say, answering to that letter, um, that uh, Lithuanian government spent many years trying to solve the issue. And they are working closely with the, um, the Committee of the uh, Preservation of Jewish Cemeteries in Europe. We know, we know very well. So yes. I, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you at this point. But when I say no one has authority, that includes any group of rabbis. I, have no, I, I can explain, maybe, what went on and why this group of rabbis decided that they'll work along with the Lithuanian Jewish community and the, and the government. I would rather leave it aside. The bottom line is they're uh, just a group of rabbis, and they don't have the authority to decide on behalf of a million Jews to sell a cemetery. Yeah, it's it's, it's an absolute fact. The cemetery is not so. No, I, when I say sell, I'm using a euphemism. I'm using an English yeah. euphemism. I don't. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. I meant to say that we that that it's okay to do it. The fact of the matter is that hundreds. You have here. Rabbi Rosenberg is the chief the chief rabbinical authority in Bnei Brak, a city of two hundred thousand uh, two hundred thousand uh, Orthodox Jews. It's there's no permission to to build in a cemetery. No one is building. It, I, I, even to build uh, on an old building. I can explain, I imagine that the rabbis in, 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 and this is something good to say for your government, I imagine that the rabbis in England, when they agreed in 2009 to that document, it's because it was a hostile government and they felt, they were told by the people that there's no chance that the government will not allow the preservation of the cemetery. So there is a protocol in case of emergency when the non-Jewish government is hostile 
to the Jews and to the Jewish cemetery, there's a protocol what to do in an emergency. That's all. And they sign this document, they have to stick with it. They do not have a right to say that one can build anything on a cemetery. It's against Jewish law 100%. I want to give the floor two minutes. He's one of the most senior halakhic authorities recognized worldwide. Rabbi Rosenberg, Thank you so much. Uh, I, I will finish. I'll give you this, this, this for the president. This is a memorial album. It's in English and Ukrainian. It has in it maps beginning uh, 200, over 200 years ago of the yeah. cemetery. Yes, sir. Go ahead and look at it. It has maps of the area. And I think you missed the first page, just uh, this is directly to the president. And this is a map here, you see it says here, Juif, it's hard to see, it's a French map. Here it says the cemetery, Juif, it was at, at that time completely, completely uh, not in the city. Then later, 1921, yeah, no. here it is, yeah, yeah. here it is, this whole, this area. This is 1930, you see how it yeah. became swallowed up in, in, in Vilnius, obviously, 1937. This yeah. is 1944 aerial map of the Germans, still intact, aside from mm. a few buildings of the army base, still intact. Today, it's basically intact, except for the sports palace and these, uh, these apartment buildings there, but it's still only 10% is built on, 90% is not touched of the cemetery. And the, here's photographs that we put together. This is uh, mm -hmm. from the river. The old ones. This is the old, old photographs of the... Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It's a very beautiful album. And the, and the last, the most important for us, is the last, you're welcome very much, is the message to the president. I will convey all your messages back to my government, both uh, the president, because uh, you were planning to meet him, and uh, the, 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 the beautiful album will be uh, delivered to his office. And the government, because the government is the one who's responsible for all these issues, this is in the government's hand. As already said, a government is doing its best in order to preserve the place, which we as Ukrainians, we perfectly understand, as I said, how important it is for you, and that's the same for us as well, because Jewish community, they, they were Lithuanians, they were, they were our own history, and, and Jewish people were Lithuanian people at the yeah. same time. So there is our government, they never put kind of, you know, they never differentiate. We all used to be and we all are Lithuanians. Those who live in Lithuania, those who have ancestors in Lithuania. So, and uh, we have all laws in place to protect all cultural heritage. This is our cultural heritage. It's yours and it's ours because it's on the land of Lithuania. All this, uh, uh, all this uh, project, uh, if we can call it the, the renovation of the sports palace. palace. We are not talking about new buildings. There were such ideas. That's for sure. We know, I know, you know that there were plans. Uh, that's why in order to assure that there will be no new buildings taking place no, government, but, shimu, shimu, shimu. but also if the, what Dr. Rabbi said, usage of a cemetery. The Any person that goes there, uses the land, uses may the thing, I, is, is disturbing. Uh, yes. May I finish? Sorry. Thank you so much. Um, the, that's why in 2015, the government bought back the whole project from the private people, from private owners, in order to preserve, to preserve it. 
So now the pictures you showed, and I can show you the picture as well, that uh, the, the, the boundaries were set uh, in 2000, back in 2000. I, I, I have the document. Do you agree with the boundaries? We're working on it, partially. There's, there's, we agree with the boundaries if you include the area that was the army base. Okay. So it's still now, the bridge. It's still the bridge. According to, to, the, to the maps agreed by the European Jewish Committee and, and other Ukrainian Jewish community and some American institutions as well, we do have the cemetery, uh, the, which the boundaries. The boundaries of the cemetery. Cemetery. Nothing is going to take place, even the reconstruction, not in the territory of Obviously. the cemetery as such. The territory of the cemetery, as you said, 90% is a big territory, it used to be uh, kind of um, Honored as a former and still still uh, a Jewish uh, cemetery, there will be no uh, I don't know uh, roads, no ways, nothing. It will be kept, and and there will be new. As far as I know, now they are discussing the project, how it will look like the, this place. There will be no buildings on that place. Uh, that I was told by my because before you come, I, I knew that you are sure, coming. Obviously. Once again, to talk to my government. To talk to the people who are dealing. They said, please tell uh, your guests that there is nothing to be built and uh, and done uh, harm to that place. And uh, um, the, the reconstruction the reconstruction of that sport palace, which was built in Soviet. And you perfectly understand that while building such a huge monster, sorry for that word, but that's I monster. agree. I use the same uh, word. <laughs> so, they digged everything. Yes. It's not us, free Lithuania, who digged and ruined. Everything is Agreed. digged because they were putting tubes, they were putting uh, sewers, everything. So everything was d done like that. And now, uh, with all the respect, my government is trying to find a solution that, uh, that all, all sides are happy. That's why it took such a long time, as I say, 10 years, in order to come to that stage, not to build anything new, because, as I said, there were plans. The plans how to commemorate uh, this area as, as a cemetery. There is kind of um, an agreement between Lithuania and Jewish community, the government, and um, the European uh, yeah, yeah, the, the committee, Schlesinger, the committee Schlesinger. Schlesinger. That yeah. There will be no concerts and very loud and, and these things taking place in that. It will, not, it will not be sport palace, it will be congress center. So means it will not be kind of a rock, a rock uh, music playing. There will be conferences, meetings. There will be a special exhibition to commemorate that place and commemorate Jewish life permanent. Express your uh, concerns. We received many different. I have, I have for you uh, letters from from right. people all uh, from from Jewish people all over the world. They're sending. So I, I would be more than happy to to, I don't know, assist you with some contacts if you go this to the more letters, and you? me, have you been to, to that place yourself? Of course, I've been, yes. Oh, I've been and I've been. And uh, I, I, I wanted to ask you a question. Yeah, just, 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 just one minute, I want to finish. We heard you say, we're very happy that you say no more building, but the answer does not satisfy us. The answer is zero use. You're asking what to do with that monstrosity? It's a great question. Perhaps you can ask the best architects in the world and designers. A memorial, yes. Usage, no. We won't give up. We're not going to stop. The pressure will, will, will continue. And, and there's, there'll be, if, if, if it doesn't happen, there'll be protests. There'll be people coming to Lithuania the whole time. It, it doesn't suffice us. It's not an answer. Rabbi Rosenberg said very clearly, no usage. Zero. Nothing. And that's it. And this, there's one point I want to add. There's an aspect. The, the problem of the monstrosity is a big problem. I'm not diminishing the problem the Lithuanian government has. I, I'm aware that I was there, I saw it with my own eyes. It's a big problem. This is Jewish cemeteries all over the world, some of them 2,000 years old. Constant, constant people coming. There's some basic information here. I put it for Thank your you use. So there is a different way to benefit the Lithuanian people and government. If we can solve the monstrosity problem, architects make an international, you give out the tender for, the, for an idea, there's a way to solve the building problem. The, I'm talking about this monstrosity. The area is a holy place. We will not stop until no touch. And the benefit will be that the moment it's declared a holy place and it's cordoned off and there's a place to pray, you will have non-stop visitors, tourists, non-stop. You cannot imagine the holy people. Every morning, I give a lecture from a person who's buried there. 
and it's hard for me not to cry because every morning I learn, I teach Chaya Odom, and this person is buried there. His, his, his grave was taken away. He had, a, he had a little building over his grave. It was taken away during the, during the Russian, uh, Russian period, in the Soviet period. And now there's going to be people coming and, and dancing and walking through. And we study his words every day. And we can't, we can't allow that to happen. And we won't allow it. It won't stop. It's not going to stop. Zero usage. I just want to make sure that the government understands here is, here is, it, in a list, this is exactly it, so that, you know, in this time, I'm, we're so happy on such a day, we have, to, we have to let you go. Zero usage. Zero usage. Remember that that's our, that's, that's, there's no, it's not negotiable. Thank you so much. That's the whole that's place. I have a question. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper. I'm a White House correspondent, and I've been to, uh, recently, to Lithuania, to Vilnius, to the cemetery there. I met with uh, President Trump's staff, President Trump himself, uh, does not support uh, any any usage at all on that property to consider, uh, from our perspective, evangelical Christians in America, desecration uh, of a cemetery would be usage of that. So um, many evangelicals uh, support no usage. I will be meeting uh, with President Trump and the staff about this. I'm returning to the White House, but President Trump is very clear about uh, you know Jewish cemeteries around the world, no desecration, no usage, but to honor the memory of the Jews Thank there. I will convey this message to you as well, that you, you, you sent us the word of President uh, Trump. Yeah, I just recently met with his advisor, Kaylian Conway. She made it very clear, no desecration. She means no usage, honoring the memory of the Jews. Thank you. I will. I will. Uh, I, I, we'll, we'll I'm you so go. sorry. I'm we, so we'll sorry. I don't feel this. comfortable. No, no, it's like, okay. You know, I, we we asked you to meet today, and I appreciate that you, you, you had such a hard day you met with us.